kick foot for a shot won't rain, and I'll cut this grill for a shot with not fucking it up. In work boots. Yes! Yes! Not gonna rain! What's up guys? John from Bennett's Customs. Today on another episode of the Shoehorn Special, uh, we are working with the grill. Now this grill is a 48, 49 Anglia grill, I believe. Yeah, I don't know how many more years they went out. But anyways, uh, a really good mate of mine up in um, Perth had it sitting on his wall. We were lucky enough to be able to purchase it off him. Very happy about, thank you Ben. But yeah, it was just sitting out there along with a thousand other things that he's got on his wall, including an amazing single rail dragster upside down. Um, it's really cool. I kind of looked at it a few times and went, man, that thing would nearly work for the project that we have. And surprisingly enough, it's almost like it was made for this other than the length of it. So on this uh, episode, basically what we're going to do is cut and section this thing. We're going to make sides for it and kind of shape it a little bit differently, but trying to keep obviously the center section of um, that makes them pretty prominent to being an Anglia grill. Just the profile itself really matches the edges of the cowl and will really give us a nice setup to make a nice little hood for this thing. So yeah, watch as we try and cut and um, probably screw this up about a thousand times, but you know, it's uh, all trial and error with this thing. So let's uh, get stuck into it. So the first thing that we needed to do was obviously try and get this thing square. Um, the motor is bolted in and square to, to the frame and everything like that. So it was pretty nice to be able to just measure off certain points of this to try and get it square along with the cowl. These things, if you're familiar with them, they have like a really like a massive rake to them um, for the factory car, uh, which looks really cool. But with this, I, I want a little bit of a slope to make it look quite aerodynamic, but not too much. So I've just kind of played around with a few different angles, the height of everything, how I want it to all sit. And basically what we're at is this point now. I've used a Sharpie. I've literally just run it along the top of the frame rail and that's kind of given me a cut line. I might not cut on this yet, but what we'll do is pull it out, put it on the table, and figure out how we can get that bottom section up there so it looks like a finished grill in this section here. So we'll pull it off now, line everything up, and um, see what we got. So, basically what I'm trying to achieve is this is obviously a very long um, section, but I really like the bottom. Having the little crank handle section is quite cool as well. So it'd be nice to be able to try and bring this up into here and just have that nice little oval, um, kind of replicating like an early track nose or, or uh, a 30s kind of indie car. So I'm just gonna try and work out a few measurements of where to kind of cut everything and slide it up and make it all fit like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, it'll probably take me a few goes. Uh, I'll, I'll measure once and cut six times. See what happens. So, basically need to cut it directly across there. Okay. Let's see if we can make this work. G map. Um, are you, can I talk? Difference. So. All right. I'm just gonna cut it. Yeah. I'm just gonna cut it, and then I'm just gonna work with it. Okay, so I just cut the tacks off um, from having the grill 
mocked up and sitting on the frame rails just to see our angles and uh, proportions with the cowl. I posted a couple photos on the ham and a fellow Canadian, um, Stogie, he, uh, he's quite the whiz when it comes to um, doing renderings and Illustrator and he um, volunteered and actually did a couple renderings for us. Um, and basically what we were after was trying to find whether or not to put the bottom of this on, um, as we'll show. And uh, yeah, I think kind of the votes were in. We thought it was going to be really nice as well to try and finish this off um, and have that sit on the top. Sorry for that. Um, yeah, so right now I'm trying to wrap my head around it as well as explain to you guys of how I'm going to try and section this piece in. Uh, there's a lot of moving variables. Um, we do uh, have a lot of, you know, the grill bits that are in here. Everything's still kind of moving quite a bit. Uh, there's no actual perfect line to this. It's, it's gradually curved the entire way. The width of this tapers slightly all the way down to the bottom. So we're going to have to kind of work with that as well. But what I think I'm going to try to achieve here is that basically I want, there's a, a piece that's put in here and it's actually brazed or spot welded through each um, grill insert or piece you'd call it that's holding them all together. And I really like where those are all sitting and it would be nice to try and leave that and cut really close to them in order to TIG weld each one back together. Um, which is going to be super tricky, but we will, we will uh, wrap our hands, heads around it. So what I'm going to try and do is just pencil out a few lines um, and do a few measurements and you'll just watch us um, as we try and gauge where we're going to go to. Once I got it where I want it, I'll cut it out, tack it in, and then I'll show you guys kind of how I came up with that idea. So. I'm a, I'm a. I'm going to have to, have to, have to cut it, cut it off, cut it, cut it off. Um, I really like these body lines that come down here and it would be really nice to actually keep that the whole way through. Um, What I've done here is marked obviously 25 mil down below this bead line and I'm just going to trim all this off for now and I would like to try and keep this line the whole way through and, and then that'll be filled in and come straight down and just be a nice feature and possibly follow this line into the rest of the car um, or the top of the hood. So I'm just going to cut these out now and then I'll probably cut the inside of this out. And then we'll fit it on there, see where it's going to sit, and we'll start seeing it come to shape. Time-consuming. Um, really trying to get my head around it still. It probably looks super simple, but there's a lot of like curves and convex and no straight lines. So it's, it's really hard to try and make this look proper. 
Um, I do really like the way that this body line follows through and I can, I can make this work. Um, but obviously we have a tighter convex uh, or you know curve through here compared to what's going on here. Um, but what I've done is all these holes are actually like as a reference I've measured them all and they're, they're really accurate for both sides. So I've just picked two kind of where the height where I want it and you can kind of see that curve on the inside meets up right there. So we need this curve to come up and meet somewhere in here. So what I'm going to try to do is just take a section of this out, figure out where that's going to come up to, and then we can start playing around with making that um, fit a little bit better. mentioned before there is this strapping here that kind of holds these together so I wouldn't mind trying to weld the bottom ones on right to them just to try and keep them relatively square they will end up getting covered anyway so if they're not totally perfect I'm okay with it being our car and also you know it's totally cool what I'm gonna try and do here is once we get these screwed in that's kind of our mock-up there we are, we are slightly off on the on the pegs, that's okay. Try and get that lined up a bit better. Shiza. Oh, this would happen. Figure it out. Forgot about the eighth blade.
Well, I keep trimming and trimming a little bit more, but I'm getting there. Um, basically, the, the curve of the bottom portion of the grill to the upper part of the grill is considerably different, although it looks the same. It it's definitely has a different contour to it. So what I'm gonna try and do is just get basically, this is kind of where we're at, um, and I'm just gonna try and get this side just lightly tacked, and then I can kind of use these as reference points to this side to try and get this side kind of lightly tacked as well. Um, and then I can just make, I just want to make sure that when you're looking at the side profile that it is, um, nat looks natural. There's no like kind of sharp line or a bit of a, you know, a peak as to where these two have kind of been formed on its side. So yeah, I'm just going to give these a couple tacks and then I'll measure on this side, do the same. And then hopefully we'll kind of be at a point where we can see the profile of it. Do you reckon it's too lean back? Well, I don't really reckon. It's kind of like a speedster. Yeah. Okay, so I've just cut it up on the table several times trying to get the exact size and, and everything lined up. Bit of a challenge, obviously, with all the curves, but it, it, it's, it's working. Um, we're kind of at it. We're at a really good 
point now where we can actually see it. It's quite cool. The crank handle actually, you can see my little finger down here. Crank handle actually lines up perfect for where it would come through, which is quite cool. So it, it almost looks like it's supposed to, supposed to be there. We've basically got, I've lifted the cowl up, 75 mil in the back. I just want it, I don't want to be sitting so much on top of it, more inside of it, you know, as your typical kind of um, earlier speedster you would. So I sit a lot better in there with that cowl raised up a little bit. So we will create the bottom sections of that in a later date. But for now, the profile of the hood line is quite um, good where, it, where it's sitting right now. Um, there's a, it's, it comes down like on a slight slope um, and then really down into that nice rake that we've kind of put the, the, the angular grill at. Um, both carbies are obviously gonna be sticking way out, but that's cool. That'll definitely look the part. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna wrap this up. This is gonna be our part one. Part two, this is coming home with me. I leave in two days back to Canada and I wanna keep working on this. So the smallest item that I can fit in my surfboard bag is gonna be this. What I'm gonna do is uh, go to Carl's shop, Carl at Make It Custom, good mate of mine. I'm gonna go to his shop and I'm gonna try and finish this up with him. Reason being why I wanna take this as well is I'm super excited to use his new punishing hammer setup. So, and that'll be coming home, obviously, um, this home, Australia. But yeah, so it'll be cool to kind of work with him and give it a, like a good demo and, and really make these pieces. And what we will try to achieve is basically follow the same profile that we have on the, on the, um, the curve here and then this is gonna come straight up right into here. So unfortunately, we'll probably will lose this body line, which it does look quite neat, but I need this to, to really kind of come out here. So um, uh, we'll end up cutting kind of along here and we will shape two kind of, you know, sail panels per se. That'll come down and we'll bevel it so everything will sit. So it'll be one piece, drop it straight on bolt it onto the front of the horseshoe. Cool, so I'll see you guys in a, another time zone on a different day. Make sure you like and subscribe, hit that notifications button. Also, we do have international shipping ticked off finally for our clothing that's on the website. So if you do uh, like some, some flames, we got these done, logos on the back. Um, we also got uh, shop tea in three different colors as well that'll be available. So if you guys wanna support and um, you know, make these things happen. Um, buy a tea and support us, because we love you guys. See you soon. Show us the back. On fire, Johnny Blaze. <laughs> they put it in that box. <laughs>